Okay, all right, all right, perfect. So yeah, I mean, uh, let's, let's just quickly start the order to cash process uh, from the creation of sales order today. Yes. <clears throat> all right. So uh, without further ado, let's let's quickly jump into NetSuite. And again, you know, uh, for all the transactions, the navigation is transactions, sales, and enter sales orders. So this is the navigation that yes. we will follow to create sales orders in NetSuite. Mm -hmm. I'll click on enter sales orders. This is going to take a couple of seconds to open up the form, but that's fine. Okay. So this is basically our sales order form. And uh, I'm going to select standard sales order form here instead of any custom form, just to make sure that we are reviewing all the standard fields of NetSuite. Okay, so here uh, again, you know, uh, I'm sure you uh, by by this time you are aware of the concept of all these sterics. So anything that is marked as sterics is going to be mandatory, and we need to provide all those details. So the first things first yes. on the sales orders would be your customer record. So you need to select the customer for which you are creating that order. So let's say, do we have a duck? No, we don't. Let's say Samsung. Okay, so we we created this customer in our last session, a Samsung INC. I'm just gonna select this. Uh, again, you know, this is gonna take a couple of seconds to select. We'll just wait. Yes. And I'm sure you're already working on NetSuite, so you realize that production is no, is not that slow. This is actually a training uh, instance. So perhaps okay, this is yes. one of the reasons, right? So yeah, don't worry about that. Okay, so mm -hmm. we have our customer selected and you will notice that my subsidiary is automatically selected based on the customer that I selected at the top, right? Now here, yes. you will again notice a, a few things, date. So this is basically the date on which we are creating this uh, sales orders. Uh, okay, so this is again, you know, a US training account. So you will notice that still the date is 31st but we are already on, on the first now. So you can change the date yeah. from here. Like if you need to change the date, you can just change the date. This is the sales order date. You will notice that the status of the sales order by default is pending fulfillment. However, if you are using any NetSuite approvals on your sales orders, so then your status would be pending approval. So based upon you know your organization's requirement and your business processes, you can change the status of the sales order uh, to either pending approval right or pending fulfillment. Pending fulfillment means that as soon as you enter this order, this order would be eligible for the fulfillment process. And if it's pending approval, mm -hmm. then someone has to approve it before it can be fulfilled. All right? Okay. So this okay. is the basic difference between them. And I will see, uh, you know, as we save the sales order. Uh, so if this is, this is, you know, a large order, a large sales orders, and, you know, need a, a start date and end date uh, in which you are going to fulfill this. So you can set your start date and end date for this sales order as well. Again, this is non-mandatory and you can also keep this blank. You can also enter the okay. customer PO number. So whenever your customer gives you a PO, you can capture the PO number here. So again, you know, very important field, uh, especially from business perspective. The sales channels, I think this is a custom field created over here. So yeah, so you, can, you can capture your sales channel against which you are capturing the sales, you can provide a memo, uh, like whatever the description or any, any any particular reference that you need to capture on the sales order. Mm -hmm. We'll then move, move forward and here you, you can assign your class, department and location. So this is the location uh, on which you are going to be fulfilling the sales order. So let's say I'm gonna be fulfilling the sales order from my San Francisco US location. So I can select my location as San Francisco US. And if I need to assign the sales to a particular product category or sales channel or you know whatever you're using as your classes and tie the sales order with this class, you can do that as well. Again, non-mandatory, you can skip this, but very important from sales perspective that you assign it to a class, uh, if not department. Okay, so I'm just gonna, let's yeah. say product line. Okay, so moving forward, these are all, all custom fields. 
So, you know, it, it's not uh, worth it to discuss each of them, but I'm just gonna enter something here. So I, it's not stopping me from saving it, but these are all custom fields, nothing standard here. Okay, and we'll then jump on to the items. So here we are basically going to enter the items that were ordered by the customer. So again, uh, you know, I can use the list from here. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna click on the list with these two arrow. So, you know, it's it's gonna open up that list for me, or you can just type it over here, like, you know, five, seven, eight. Let me just type that. And yeah, here is my favorite item, AC57891. I'm gonna select this item. This is something that the customer has ordered. And uh, you will notice all the price levels and rate will automatically be populated. I can adjust the quantity to whatever quantity that was ordered. So let's say, you know, customer ordered 10 quantity for this item. Uh, here by default, the list price or the base price was selected, but I can change the price level if I want to. So on the sales order level, if you need to change the price level for this customer, you can also change that. So let's say I wanna give them a 10% discount prices. So I'm gonna select 10% discount and you will notice that you know, a discounted price automatically got populated. So, you know, you yeah. also have that option. And uh, what you can also do is, uh, I'm sure why this, okay. And there is this custom option right in the bottom. So if you select custom, mm -hmm. so you can give any rate that you want to give them. So instead of any pre-populated okay. price level, you can also give a custom rate. So let's say I'm gonna give them uh, a, a rate of, let's say 900. So now I, I have I have the authority of the sales trap or any one who is entering the sales order would have the authority to change the rate by themselves rather than using the next week pricing. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And here you can enter the sales tax code. So any any sales tax that you would want to apply on this sales order, you would be selecting that sales tax code. So right now it is 8.25%. Uh, and uh, you know this is going to be applied as a sales tax. Okay, and uh, here, you know, there's also one one very important thing that I also want to show is the. Let me just pretty quickly find that. Yeah, so you can you can also provide your dates on which you are uh, you know expecting this to ship. So let me find that really, really quickly for you. Yeah, so supply required by date. So uh, when, when when you need this uh, item to be uh, fulfilled to the customer, so you can provide all those dates as well. So let's say, you know, I need to fulfill this by 7th of January. So I can provide my uh, date over here. And you can also capture your expected ship dates on your line level. So just, for, just to make sure that, you know, uh, you are making your inventory available by that date because that's the date uh, before you need to, uh, you know, make sure that the item is available in your location for fulfillment. So this is more on the supply chain okay. planning side. So uh, based on the expected ship date, you will ensure that the item is available in your in-house location. So you can then send it out to the customer, right? So okay. this, is, this is how, you know, the supply chain planning would work based on the expected ship date. Now you can enter any more items as well, you know, uh, based on what is being ordered from the customer. For the sake of demo, we'll just keep it simple to one item and we'll explore other fields that are available on the sales order. So here you have your important tab called shipping. So here you can provide your actual ship date that you are expecting this item to be shipped. So let's say we are we are targeting this to be shipped by seven. So I'm gonna enter my ship date here. So you can select your shipping carrier. So uh, by which carrier you are uh, expecting this order to be shipped, you can select that. Uh, you know, by default, NetSuite gets integrated with UPS, FedEx, and USPS. So you can do that. You can also create your uh, non-integrated shipping carriers. So I can select FedEx and more, and I can select my shipping method. Right now, there is only one shipping method, but you can create more shipping methods like truck or, you know, LTL or uh, container or whatever, you know, there are multiple shipping methods that you can uh, create and select over here based on the method that you are going to use to fulfill this order. So I'm just okay. gonna be using a Proton shipping method. You'll notice that automatically, uh, based on the shipping method, a shipping cost was uh, populated. 
but here I can also change the shipping cost. So this is basically the shipping cost that I'm going to charge to this customer uh, for 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 my uh, you know uh, freight and uh, delivery cost. So let's say two hundred dollars. So this is basically the shipping income that I will get, or I'm going to charge to my customer. So for instance, whenever you you order online, right, there is always a shipping cost that gets added to your cart. So this is basically that shipping cost. Okay. And here you can also select the ship to uh, address. So this is basically the address on which uh, we are going to be uh, fulfilling these items. So if you don't find any, you can just simply click on a uh, new or the plus sign over here, and you can provide the address for this customer. So you can you can okay. enter address line one, two, city, state. And, and the best thing is that based on the zip code that you select on the shipping address, NetSuite will be able to identify the sales tax code to be applied on the sales transaction. And if you are using the FedEx UPS and USPS integration, based on the zip code and the state and the city that you select over here, NetSuite would uh, automatically be able to calculate the right shipping cost for you as well. Again, uh, for that, yes. it is important that you know you you have your sh FedEx integration uh, uh, enabled. But uh, but yeah, I mean, just for information, you have that option as well. All right. So once you have established your shipping methods, shipping carrier, shipping cost for the sale, you can also go into the billing tab over here, and you can select your terms that you would want to apply on the sales order. So let's say I'm going to give them a 15% net uh, term. Uh, for this uh, sales transaction so I can provide that over here. I can select my billing address So for this customer if there is a separate billing address and a separate shipping address You can select a different billing address over here uh, Or you can just simply use the same shipping address that you are going to ship on All right And then in the accounting tab You know you have some information here. You're you're looking into the currency of this transaction. So this is this is basically in a USD dollar, uh, US dollar uh, currency. Uh, so anything that you save will be uh, saved in USD. So if you need to change the, the currency for this, you can also do that. Uh, but for that, it is important that the currency, the different currency that you want to apply is also assigned on the customer record. So remember on the financial tab of the customer, you had the ability to add more currencies if you deal with them in different currencies uh, than the base currency. Okay. Okay. And one very cool feature of NetSuite is the gross profit calculation. So standing on the sales order, you can also uh, determine what profit you are making on the sales transaction. So based on the sales amount and based on the item that you have selected, NetSuite will automatically create a gross profit just to show you what profit you are going to make on the sales transaction. So I can see that I'm making a profit of 28% gross profit. And I think this is this is good, uh, you know, in terms of making money. So I think we are fine. And uh, in the relationship tab, you can add uh, any contact person for this particular sales transaction. Uh, again, nothing uh, mandatory, nothing uh, something that will impact your overall transaction process. And finally, in the sales team, you can assign an employee uh, that is uh, your sales rep, perhaps that would be assigned for the sales transaction. So let's say, you know. Uh, Adrian is my sales rep for this particular sales transaction. He was the person who actually, uh, you know, won the sale for us. So I'm going to assign this, and uh, you know, maybe later Adrian would also be getting some commission on the sales. So I can assign a sales rep on my sales transaction. All right. Okay. And okay. Uh, in my communication tab, uh, I think this is all right. So yeah, once I save this, I will also show you the communication tab. But yeah. These are all the important fields and important tabs uh, on the sales order document. And uh, once you have, uh, you know, verified it, once you have validated it, you can simply save the sales order. Okay. All right. Okay. So in the communication tab, you know, you also have the option to be emailed. So if you directly want to sell, uh, you know, uh, save when you save the sales order, and if you want to send out an PDF email to your customer, you can mark this as to be emailed. Give your email address, and you know, automatically NetSuite will shoot out an email. So if I don't want to do that, I can simply uncheck this and simply save the sales order. So if not, we need to send manually to the customer. 
Exactly. So if you don't want to do this manually, and uh, upon saving, if you directly mm. want to send out an email, you can use that to be emailed. Yeah. So the sales order is now saved, and you will notice that the status is pending fulfillment, um, which means that mm. now the sales order is ready for your fulfillment process. Okay. And if this was in pending approval status, someone had to first approve it, and then you know uh, it would go in my pending fulfillment status. Mm 